everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm going to be doing two videos today. Um, the first one, this one, um, I'm just going to provide a, um, a, a brief update on my cooking and what sort of foods I've been eating lately. And in my, uh, the second video I'm going to be talking about um, a new mental health campaign that's been set up in Australia. Okay, so first of all, this video um, I'm going to talk to you now about some of the foods I've been trying lately. As you know, um, one of my major interests, my um, what some might call like my special preoccupation, my special interest, if you like, because in autism, in autism, strong interests, um, intense interests get given the name special interests. Um, I think the special bit means like specialist, because they're very intense, they're very specific, they're very um, one focus sort of thing, and um, obviously one of my special interests, I've got two really, um, food and cooking and um, sort of reading books, um, particularly related to philosophy and things like that, um, but one of my really big areas is cooking, food, nutrition, which has sort of been lifelong, um, and lately um, I've, I've been getting more into seasonal cooking, um, that's to say I'm trying to eat seasonally, you know, following the seasons, um, and then, so taking specific foods such as plums, which are now currently in season, as we're now in autumn, and trying to cook them and use them in as many different permutations as possible, constantly like comparing and contrasting different recipes, collecting recipes and things like that. So I'm really, really into that. So yeah, so I've been eating a lot of plums lately. Um, I don't know if plums are my favourite fruits. They're okay. Um, I think I prefer them stewed to eating them uh, raw. Um, but obviously it depends on the plum, because you can get some really nice juicy plums. With with a plum, if I were to eat it raw, it has to be really, really juicy. Um, now recently I tried um, an instant crumble, an instant crumble, because um, I have made like proper crumbles before, but obviously they can be quite labour intensive. Uh, so I struck upon the idea that maybe I could use... Um, flapjack bars, or porridge oat bars, as these are called, um, and kind of make an instant crumble out of them by getting a bar and just literally crumbling it over stewed fruit. And like, voila, there's your crumble. Um, I got these bars. Show you to camera. Um, yeah, um, apple and cinnamon porridge oat bars by Stokes. That's the company. Um passionate about porridge it said they're made by hand I don't quite know what it means by made by hand is that just like a marketing ploy um because clearly they're still made in a factory somewhere um but yeah it's it says a few years ago at the Edinburgh Christmas farmers market we served bowls of porridge topped with stewed apples porridge topped with stewed apples I never tried porridge topped with stewed apples before hmm maybe that would be actually quite nice something I could try in future Toasted oats and a sprinkle of cinnamon. That's got me thinking, seriously. I haven't actually read the blurb yet. The recipe was a hit, so we made it into apple and cinnamon porridge oat bars for a tasty year-round treat. Perfect on the go. You can also try our porridge quick pots or flavoured porridge. He says, Stoats was born from a simple idea to take porridge to the people. In 2005, we toured the big summer music festivals... Serving our unique blend of porridge from a shiny wee trailer with a big sign saying Stokes Porridge Bar. <laughs> the queues were long, but some seemed confused, expecting bars of porridge. Why would you want to eat porridge, hot porridge in the summer anyway, unless it's like, um, certainly during a heatwave I didn't actually want porridge. I mean, I love porridge, but in a heatwave, I haven't, I haven't actually eaten porridge now for a while now. I've only just started eating it again. So in the summer when it's really hot, you want porridge, would you? Um, but anyway, um, so yes, yeah, so yeah, we're expecting a porridge bar. So we returned to our Edinburgh kitchen and set about creating a world's first porridge snack bars. We pack them with the same tasty natural ingredients that make our porridge so popular. People love them. Hope you do too. Scottish porridge oat bars with dried apple and cinnamon. Seriously, I'm not sponsoring this company. I'm not advertising them. <laughs> I just like reading a blurb on packets. It's one of my things. Um, so yeah, it contains Scottish porridge oats, unsalted butter, soft brown sugar, golden syrup, dried apple, Sultana, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds and cinnamon. So I think it's quite a pure product. I mean, obviously it is high in sugar and fat, as you'd expect, but it doesn't contain any additives. You know, it's the sort of ingredients that anyone would put into porridge, really. Oh, sorry, not into porridge, into a sort of flapjack bar. Um, or maybe into porridge as well, actually. I mean, I don't really add much sugar to my porridge, but there you go. 
So yeah, so anyway, so what I thought was, I, 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 I took one of those, it's just an idea I had, and um, I stewed some perfectly white plums, the ones that are ripe at purchase, um, because you could get those now in the supermarket, it's great, because it's such a faff buying, I, I, I made the mistake of doing this recently, when I was in uh, Waitrose, one of my ne supermarkets nearest to me, and they, I don't think they do um, perfectly ripe fruits, so I made a mistake of buying some green gauges there, and they weren't perfectly ripe, and you have to like leave them to ripen at room temperature, which I did, I left them to ripen at room temperature for like two days, and they were still rock solid after that, and, and even when they started to ripen, they just didn't taste that nice, they had a rather weird taste, so m and is great because you can get like perfectly ripe fruits there so I always try to get all my fruits like plums and things from m and because they are ripe at purchase which is what I want. Um, so I got some perfectly ripe plums from m and and then I just stewed them in some fresh orange juice and I squeeze fresh from an orange with a cinnamon stick for 15 minutes. You only remove the cinnamon stick but it leaves a nice flavour. And then I topped it with Greek yoghurt and then I crumbled an apple and cinnamon duck duck bar on top. Um, I had this for breakfast. And um, it was really, really very nice. So I recommend that one. If you ever want to make a quick instant porridge, it's worth a shot. Now, no, moving on to sa uh, savoury products now. Savoury foods now, I should say. Um, this is one of my uh, favourite books that I use for cooking inspiration. Um, it actually used to be one of my mum's books, but it's now mine. Um, 500 Greatest Ever Vegetarian Recipes. I'm not a vegetarian myself. I'm not a strict vegetarian or anything. Um, I'd be, I would be being disingenuous if I said I was a strict vegetarian because I'm not, um, because I do, you know, very occasionally say I might have a bit of pork pie or whatever, you know, and I do eat fish a bit, so I'm not a vegetarian, but I do eat a lot of vegetarian food, so I'm kind of like a partial vegetarian, I guess, or maybe like a flexitarian. But anyhow, um, curried mushrooms. Now, I really like spicy food. For me, food has to have flavour. It needs lots of flavour. I do not like bland food. I am someone who likes flavour in their food. Now, I don't, now, don't get me wrong, I don't like, although I do like food with lots of flavour, I mean, I don't, there, there is a limit, I don't like really, really hot food, you know, to the point where your, like, lips are blist, like, going on fire, um, <laughs> you know, like, not like one of those, like, chilli aficionados, you, like, go to those chilli, kind of, um, uh, what do you call them, festivals or whatever, and they, like, eat loads and loads of chilli, and, you know, it's kind of like a competition to see who can eat the most chilli, I wouldn't do that, but I do like my food spicy, uh, I'm not particularly keen on the chilli though, chilli's probably, chilli and cayenne are maybe the two spices why I'm a little bit careful with, because I'm not too keen on them, but other spices I love. Um, so curried mushrooms, now, so this is basically mushroom curry, I made this the last two nights and it's really, really very nice. All you do is you heat some oil in the saucepan, you then add cumin seeds, I'm not going to tell you exactly how many cumin seeds to add, because I do think this is down to personal preference, I mean I added maybe like a half a teaspoon, but really it is up to you, so just experiment. So you add cumin seeds, peppercorns, I didn't add peppercorns, Pepper is one of the other spices I'm okay with, but I prefer ground pepper. I'm not so keen on peppercorns. It always gets stuck in my throat and makes me cough, so I don't particularly like peppercorns. They're yeah, a little bit, I don't know, they're the sort of things that <laughs> I'm not keen on them. But if they're like really, really ground and like it really, really ground form, then I do, because then they don't make me cough. But I don't like them, in, I don't like the corny bits. They can get a bit, and be a bit hot as well. Um, but yeah, so I added cumin seeds, cardamom pods, and turmeric and fried that over a low heat, stirring occasionally for 2-3 to three minutes. You then add the onion, finely chopped, and fry for about 5 minutes, stirring occasionally until golden. You then stir in cumin, ground coriander, and garam masala. Garam masala is just a mixture of different spices, really. And fry for 2 minutes more. You then add chilli. This recipe stipulated fresh chilli, but again, like I say, I'm not that keen on chilli, so I use dry chilli, and it was really mild chilli, because chilli is one of the few spices that I don't like hot, or don't like much of. Um, so I added that. I added garlic, now I add a lot of garlic, I really am into garlic, so for me, I nearly always add two to three <laughs> two to three cloves of garlic, I just love garlic, I really do, I'm just used to garlic, and that to me even isn't that garlicky, because I've got such a, I'm just so used to garlic, it takes a lot of garlic for me to think, ooh, it gets a lot, so yeah, I add a lot of garlic, crushed, um, well, I might have lost my page, yeah, add your chilli, garlic and ginger, and fry for two to three minutes, Stirring all the time to prevent the spices from sticking to the pan. You then stir in a can of tomatoes. I just add a small, you know, small amount of tomato because I was just one person. And again, you bring to the boil, simmer for five minutes. You then add the mushrooms and cover and simmer over a low heat. Now the recipe says ten minutes, and these are buttered mushrooms halved. Um, but any mushroom would suffice. Just make sure if they're larger, just chop them up smaller. 
Um, now I actually, the first time I did it, I did cook them for 10 minutes, but I thought they were a bit overcooked because I like mushrooms to have a bit of flavour and I don't like them when they get too soft. So the second time I did it, I only cooked mushrooms for about 4 to 5 minutes and it tasted so much nicer. The mushrooms had more flavour, they weren't so soft and it was just overall nicer. So I think 10 minutes is a bit excessive for cooking mushrooms. Mushrooms don't really need to get long to cook, but you know, just play around with it, it's all down to personal preference. Um, so again, you serve into dish and discard the cardamom pods because the cardamom pods in this are just really for flavour. Um, and then you garnish it and serve with some chopped fresh coriander. I had it with basmati rice. I use the brown rice. It's healthier. It takes a bit longer to cook, but it's healthier, better for you. Um, and I just prefer it. It's a nicer texture. So I used that. And I also had it with a bit of natural yogurt. It was really, really nice. So I recommend that. Curried mushrooms. Right. What's it? Oh, yes. Now... The other thing I'd like to show to camera briefly is um, I'm really into fruit and nut bars. Um, but a lot of breakfast bars are full of sugars and um, artificial stuff that you don't really need. Now, I, 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 I came upon this, I think it must have been like maybe a year or two ago. The Naked Company. There you go, Naked. It's a UK-based company. I don't know if they have them elsewhere in other countries, although you might find similar companies, because it seems to be quite in at the moment. This idea of having raw fruit and nut bars, where literally all you have in the bar is simply natural ingredients. Raw fruit and nuts. And some of the bars also have oats added and, um, you know, fruit extracts, a concentrate, apple, carob, or a hint of natural flavouring might be added, such as cinnamon and nutmeg, but it's all natural. That's the key thing. Now, these are really, really nice. I've tried pretty much every single one now. I mean, I do have my favourites, and some I prefer more than others. I think my favourite one is the Bakewell Tart one, because they often are given names such as Bakewell Tart, Apple Danish, Banana Bread, and things like that. Foods that you might think of are not particularly healthy, but in this it is healthy, and it really can taste just like the, uh, the other more unhealthy products so you sort of feel like you're almost eating the unhealthy product but in a healthy way um so i i like the that the um cherry bakewell one is one of my favorites that's just literally like i think it i can't remember exactly what it is i haven't got it in front of me but it's like dates i think and uh cashews i think or some other nut and it's got a, it's got cherry flavoring and it really tastes like and really almondy it really tastes almondy because of the natural flavorings they add and it really does emulate a bakewell tart it's amazing um I think that must be my favourite one, and also I quite like the cashew cookie one, which is literally just cashews and dates. That's all it is, cashews and dates, and it's just amazing. They bind this all into a bar, and it tastes so nice, and it also counts as one of your five a day as well. So I'm trying to have these now more instead of, like, biscuits and other things, because they satisfy get sweet fix without being unhealthy and counting one as one of your five a day. Um, as I said, I'm not so keen, some of them I'm not so keen on. The banana bread one, which I've got here, is okay. It's not my favourite one. I find it a little bit sweet. It contains dates, bananas, oats, um raisins, walnuts, <laughs> fruit extract, and a hint of natural flavouring, cinnamon and nutmeg, but I find this one a little bit sweet, but as I say, it's okay, I don't dislike it, it's just not one of my favourite ones, but you know, you might like it, um, apple danish, here we are, oh, yeah. apple danish, sorry, I've got, this, I've got to go right way up, yeah, apple danish, here we go, um, again, that's just basically dates, oats, raisins, fruit extract, cashews, apples, and a hint of natural flavouring, cinnamon and nutmeg, and also the cocoa twist, I do quite like the cocoa twist actually. That's dates, oats, raisins, cashews, fruit extract, and cocoa. That's quite a nice one. Uh, not my favourite, as I say. I think um, the cherry bakewell is one of my favourites. Oh, and also the carrot cake one, which has actually got carrot in it and walnuts and um, spices. It really does taste like carrot cake. It's amazing. So I really do recommend those. But as I say, if you're not in the UK, do check in a local health food store because you might be able to find similar products to this. Um, they are worth trying. Um, and I've also tried Marmite. Marmite um, cheese recently. Um, now, Marmite or yeast extract, as it's otherwise known, um, is is kind of uh, it's a love it's a love or hate affair. People tend to love it or they hate it, as the saying goes. Um, I'm more in a love it camp, although I don't like it in massive quantities, but I do like small amounts of it and I do like it because I like that umami savoury taste. I'm quite an umami person. I'm quite into my savoury foods, probably more than sweet foods. Um, and they've recently released Marmite sort of cheese, and it's just in little circles, a bit like a sort of baby bell. When you, and it's got like a Marmite, um, you know, insignia on the front. And then when you remove the packaging, it's just like this little brown circle, light brown circle, and it really does taste marmite Now, obviously, this isn't going to be to everyone's taste, because not everyone likes Marmite, but I really, really like it. Um, the first time I tried it, I wasn't sure, because the second time I was like, yeah, actually, no, I do like it, and so it goes well with apples. So, you know, if you like Marmite, that might be something you want to try. And, um, yeah, do you like Marmite? Let me know, because obviously, as I say, it is a love it or hate it affair. And red gauges, as I've mentioned, plums. And um, 
there's, there's obviously green gauges, which you may have heard of. Green gauges, I think, are mainly grown in France and Spain. They're imported to the UK. But red gauges, I guess, are like the red take on a green gauge. They're, they're kind of like small plums, and they're red in colour. And it, they do taste quite like green gauges, but they're grown in the UK. And I bought some recently from M&S, perfectly ripe, and they're really, really nice. I'd say they're vibrant purple colour. And I would say, in a way, they're even nicer than green gauges. These, one, these particular ones are so juicy. I don't know if they grow them elsewhere, but red gauges, they're really, really very nice. Okay, so I'm going to finish this video now. Um, I will update you on more recipes I've tried in future videos, and I hope you've enjoyed watching. Do you please let me know what you think of this video in the comments box below, any thoughts you have on the recipes I mentioned today, any foods you've been eating lately, um, and just things like that. I'd be very interested to know. So until next time, thank you for watching.